snows of a thousand years packed into glaciers. Forced slowly across mountains, down valleys, and into the sea. Rock-hard white cover that stills broad lakes and lazy rivers. Nature's ermine mantle that cloaks an entire continent. Blue-white mountains of it. Nomads of the polar seas. Ice. Nature's gauntlet of challenge to man's progress. His exploration and development of vast areas of the earth. Over 100 years ago, men and ships of the United States Coast Guard first accepted that challenge as the cutters Lincoln, Bear, and Corwin breached Arctic ice fields to carry the flag into our newly acquired territory of Alaska. For decades, these cutters and those that followed were the only contact with the outside world. They brought the only law, learning, and medical care known to the native Eskimo. In the pitch dark hours of April 14, 1912, the luxury liner Titanic struck a North Atlantic iceberg and sank with a loss of 1,500 lives. In 1913, the United States Coast Guard accepted the challenge of carrying out an international ice patrol to prevent recurrence of such a tragedy. Thus, for over half a century, Cutters have searched for, located, and tracked hundreds of bergs during the January to July ice season each year. Since the patrol was started, not a single vessel has been lost to the beautiful but deadly icebergs in North Atlantic shipping lanes. In recent years, Coast Guard long-range patrol planes have taken over most of the tedious search duties. Even in foggy weather using their radar, they can search several thousand square miles of trackless ocean in a day. They not only locate and report positions of the bergs, but also bomb them with colored dye to help in keeping track of their erratic movements. In World War II, other Coast Guardsmen accepted the ice challenge patrolling frigid Arctic waters to ensure security of Greenland and its sea approaches. Their mastery of Arctic ice led to the capture of Nazi radio stations, vessels, supplies and personnel. Their actions deprived the enemy of vital weather and military intelligence information. In post-war years, the tempo quickened as man assaulted the ice-covered Arctic and Antarctic. Coast Guard icebreakers led the way for ships carrying equipment, supplies, and materials for construction of scientific and defense outposts in the polar regions. Far from the polar ice packs, Winter locks rivers, lakes, harbors, and bays of the northern United States in an icy grip, challenging man once more to move through waterways so vital to commerce. Again, Coast Guardsmen accept the challenge. Blunt-nosed river tenders fitted with special sharp steel bows are driven into shore-to-shore -shore ice cover of the Ohio, Missouri and Upper Mississippi rivers to free barge tows carrying fuel and other cargo to river ports. Seagoing buoy tenders free ice-bound Hudson River traffic 
from Manhattan to Albany and crisscross Chesapeake and Delaware Bays to break channels for Baltimore, Washington, and Philadelphia bound ships and barges. Barrel-chested Coast Guard tugs break winter's paralysis in ports like Boston, Buffalo, Cleveland, and Detroit. As winter reigns king from mid-December to early April each year, long ships of the Great Lakes fleet lay silent and deserted at dockside. In ice-bound industrial centers, stockpiles of coal, grain, and ore dwindle to near nothing. Hungry furnaces grow cold, and huge grain elevators stand empty. To dethrone the icy monarch and revitalize multi-billion dollar lakefront industry, the Coast Guard cutter Mackinac, a 10,000 horsepower ice pick, rams her way through the Straits of Mackinac, up the St. Mary's River, through the Sioux Locks and into Whitefish Bay leading the first of the lake freighters into open water of Lake Superior. This is the vanguard of a fleet that will carry over 200 million tons of cargo before next winter's snow and ice once again stay their passage. Resolute Bay, Fox Basin, Thule, McMurdo, Palmer, Prudog Bay, until a few years ago, almost unknown points of no interest in the Arctic and the Antarctic. Today, they are regular ports of call for Coast Guard icebreakers as man finds it necessary to penetrate deeper and stay longer in ice areas at the top and bottom of the world. Shortly after World War II, in the interest of national defense, the icebreakers North Wind and East Wind carried men and materials and led thin-skinned vessels north of the Arctic Circle to roll back frozen tundra and build military outposts. Into the land of the kayak and the dog sled, they brought the helicopter to cast 90-mile-an-hour shadows across the ice. and give man his first close look into canyon-like crevasses of Greenland glaciers. They carried Admiral Byrd and his party across the frozen sea approaches, past the Ross ice shelf and towering Mount Erebus to the continent of Antarctica. Under the curious eyes of formerly attired welcoming committees, to rediscover little America and establish new bases like McMurdo and Palmer Station. Today, hardy, dedicated crews winter in at these bases. They wait anxiously for winter's end and the returning icebreakers making their solitary track across the frozen sea. Or working in pairs, to ram their way through polar ice, bringing first human contact with the outside world, and a year's supply of food, fuel, and supplies to be ferried ashore by helicopters. Or offloaded onto the ice from the breakers or supply ships. In the short span of polar summer, Man has to prepare for the isolation and darkness of winter, or he must be self-sustaining to survive in this world of ice. Ice that flows across mountains and down valleys to the sea, that drifts majestically with wind and tide. Ice that chokes lakes and rivers, that covers frigid seas and a polar continent. Ice, one of nature's oldest and most formidable challenges to man as he seeks to move his commerce, discover new resources, defend his sovereignty, and occupy and develop 
vast regions of the world.